name is Jodi Linky Chow from Mandeville, Jamaica. My name is Alberta Whittle. Um, I'm from Barbados. I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. I've been here for a couple of months now preparing for an exhibition at the Center for African Studies. My work, uh, I would say it's about a combination of things. Um, it's really drawing from my childhood experience growing up in Jamaica and being a lover of the nature there and the culture there and how, how living in the United States or in, in this contemporary society um, infringes upon uh, a lot of areas that are more uh, rural or have a lot of, of the natural landscape. Um, they are commercializing the spaces and um, also my work deals with um, some social, some societal issues, let's say sexuality is a component of it, um, but it's basically coming from, from my point of view as an immigrant and also as a female immigrant um, from Jamaica coming to the United States, um, I draw on these recollections uh, from my childhood past in a place of like pure landscape, very lush landscape, um, and agriculture, and um, a pastime that's more pure and um, I would say um, traditional in a sense. When I think about making work, it's still very much comes from my feeling as being a Caribbean woman. And that can be a Caribbean woman living in Barbados or when I'm overseas, but it's very much informed by that and about the formation of my identity and how I see myself fitting into the Caribbean landscape and my concerns and the things I love when I'm there. But generally it's about trying to make some kind of commentary on myself and how I fit into these different worlds because I grew up in Barbados but I've been living in the UK for a number of years and now I'm in Cape Town and something which always comes up when I'm home is in Barbados is the feeling of the, the struggle between male and female identity and how within the landscape there seems to always be this tension so walking on the streets in Barbados women are always sister, women are always called at and it becomes quite a hostile place and so I find myself because of that even if it's not intended aggression I find myself almost confused by that almost overemphasized masculinity where there is this freedom to comment on women every day on what they're wearing on their appearance everything and i struggle a lot with that and even though there's so many women in positions of power in the caribbean region The streets are a space for men. They are still, they're the spaces where women feel most vulnerable. I mean, walking somewhere and hearing footsteps still causes me alarm when I'm on my own. And that is, that is, that's terrible thinking about those three women in Cleveland who've just emerged. I mean, to me, it's, it's terrifying that it's still happening. I want it so desperately to change and wonder when is that going to happen. Sometimes I really consider gender um, as part of my performance practice because, um, it, I mean, it's it's just natural to me that I'm going to use this perspective of me as a female, a minority. Um, so naturally that's going to be my perspective that I'm going to draw from to make my work. And so um, gender oftentimes is some, it has some importance, but 
Lately, I've been trying to find a, make, find a way to make my work more universal, not necessarily coming from a, fem, a female perspective or point of view. Do you consider yourself a feminist? Yes, I do. I would say I do, more than don't, because I do believe in equal rights for women, and I do believe in um, women having um, authority and control and um, having the same opportunities as men. So, yeah, I would say more than not, I am a feminist. Definitely, definitely. I think it's impossible not to you know, if you're a woman, you're always being affected by the rest of the world, you're not living in isolation, and there's still such huge gender equalities that you have to take some kind of stance. You always have an opinion on what's happening in the world, because things, you know, you're, you're not living in a bubble, and we have a responsibility to try and change things, and to make things possible for ourselves and for the next generation. So no, I definitely consider myself a feminist. Um. The role of sexuality in my work, um, I try not to make that the primary focus in my work, but um, it's, I mean, being that my work is more about kind of like nature and like um, the constructs of society, a little bit of, a little bit political, maybe even a little bit more kind of just about interacting with people of all kinds. Um, I don't think uh, sexuality is like the primary thing I like to bring out in my work, but sometimes I do um, address sexuality in my work. It all depends on the, on, the, on the theme or the idea. For instance, if I'm doing a work that's about the shoreline being depleted because of global warming or what have you, um, like uh, I made a piece one time out of like uh, industrial fishnet but it was in the shape of a star like looking like a starfish with shelled on top and I was inside of it and I emerged from the form as just a, just a woman on the beach bikini body just wearing a bikini so in that sense um, I felt like the character the, and the, the role of the female, like this is the best way to represent yeah. like, this issue. It really, it really depends, and it's not, it's not normally um, the the first thing I think of when I'm making my work. Sexuality takes a big part, I would say, of my work because it also connects to how I feel about gender and the, you know, the two things are completely connected to me. The performance which I did at Fresh Milk was um, drawn from a series of um, digital posters which I made um, referring to this, I guess would say a tradition of producing posters, advertising fets or dances, but they exist with a specific visual language and the, this visual language really presents very stark extremes of sexual behavior. The women are usually being presented as being sexually available or empowered somehow by their sexuality. Um, the men are, are dominant, physically dominant, and they are also potent. There's a lot of potency which is always being presented. And I try to disrupt this by presenting my body in the role of the male and the female in the posters and also in the performance and even though I'm doing this performance with the full knowledge that I can't really completely pass as being male or female and I tried to adopt this space of neutrality. It was, um, that to me is trying to actually show how so much of what we understand about gender is in fact a series of masquerades. We assume that men behave in one way and women behave in another because they're dressed in this way or because they um, they take on certain mannerisms. And I'm always intrigued when I'm in Barbados about how the role of men, and it seems to be completely static and there's very little questioning about there being other options of sexuality, about other options of personhood, other options of masculinity towards women. Women can be so many more, we have so many more options, so many more ideas of assuming different roles as 
businesswoman, as lover, as mother, as daughter, as sister, as entrepreneur, as being, um, you know, you can be still, you can, you can be, be all things to yourself and to everyone. Whereas men, it seems as though they can really only ever strive to be this dominant male sexual kind of superman figure and any attempt to disrupt that confuses people. Uh, in my work I do like to address uh, elements of, of desire and consumption and uh, like what's accepted, what's not. And also um, recently like I, I just came back from a lovely uh, few months in Asia and I had to do some self-discovery and over there it's just so interesting to see the, the commonalities between East and West or Chinese, China and Jamaica and you know how there are these like um, how we connect and how we how we are so different but they are so but more and more I see different cultures it's amazing to see how much we have in common so um, lately that's what I really want to address with my work and I think that it takes away from introducing sexuality in the work um, that's why I'm saying it's more Universal. Well, the bananas for me, they present very, they present some very different ideas. I mean, they're obviously fallacies, and they also still work with this sense of exoticism of black people that you see in historical representations of them when they're being compared to animals. And when I had them placed on my body, in some ways, it's meant to mirror the weight of the expectations of these comments which as a woman I receive when I'm walking down the street but then I'm also able to stand up and have them fall through my body and I'm claiming myself again, my own physicality and I'm walking off from that. And then the audience member who had positioned these in my body is then actually handed back those bananas so they must also feel that way. It then, at the end, I ended up having to hold all of them, so I had this huge bundle of bananas which in no way can I actually really contain. And it's about that slippage, and it's about the collapse of that, of that kind of me trying to present this veneer of masculinity at different times during the performance, that it has to, that it has to kind of fail in some way. So it's almost like the mask is sliding, because I'm trying to hold these things, I'm trying to contain this image, but it's impossible. And, that, and you see, that to me, in a way, really mirrors what gender is. Gender becomes the static thing where we're trying so hard to hold on to this guise, this guise of femininity, this guise of masculinity, but yet the mask has to fall at some point. Can you tell us this is the banana decorator now? <laughs> <laughs> Kitchen. Time for the banana bread.